Welcome to Deep Dive Defense, military and aerospace enthusiasts. Over here we give rare insights you won't hear elsewhere. Today's video focuses on a key high-value object of such critical importance for Iran that it served as the primary target for both retaliation strikes conducted by Israel against Iran in 2024. Namely, the Russian-made S-300 PMU-2 surface-to-air missile defense system. The explanation detailing why this specific system holds such significance and the narrative of how Iran acquired it will be covered extensively in the later part of this video. First, however, we will analyze why Israel claims to the public to have neutralized Iran's air defenses by striking the fire control radars associated with one or several S-300 surface-to-air missile systems. Push the like button to support this new channel within the YouTube algorithm. Now let's begin. To comprehend the background, three key facts require initial clarification. While only a single satellite photograph showing a damaged Iranian S-300 fire control radar exists, the Israeli claim of having struck more than one of these system components critical for battery operation is rather credible. This credibility stems from Israel's status as a key United States ally, granting it constant access to data gathered by signal intelligence satellites continuously monitoring active radar systems within Iran. This unique capability, possessed only by the United States at such a level, constitutes the key reason Israel possesses the ability to locate those vital S-300 fire control radars. Additionally, Israel ranks among the few countries globally possessing a suitable effector. This refers to a missile that is exceptionally difficult to detect in time, capable of reaching its target rapidly enough to prevent relocation, and featuring the long range necessary for safe launch from well outside Iranian airspace. This weapon, the Golden Horizon missile, is examined in greater detail within the video linked above. What is clear is that the system reaction time to hit the small signature glider of the Golden Horizon next generation air launched ballistic missile, coming in at high supersonic speeds, is not a threat the S-300 PMU-2 was designed to counter. This unique combination of capabilities, the ability to locate mobile S-300 fire control radars and the capacity to hit them effectively, renders Israel's claim of striking more than one such radar credible. The critical question therefore becomes, why are the S-300 surface-to-air missile systems of such high importance? The answer appears to lie in their status as the sole known air defense system within Iran's arsenal, possessing a credible capability to intercept medium-range ballistic missiles. Primarily, the Israeli Jericho-2 and Jericho-3 nuclear-tipped missiles, which place Iran's capital city, Tehran, and other major cities at risk of nuclear strike. Consequently, Israel's claim of having literally neutralized Iran's air defenses can be interpreted as nuclear blackmail. This means Iran's capital city is at risk of a counter-value nuclear strike should a confrontation escalate to its highest possible level. Two key reactions from Iran render this narrative even more compelling. Typically, both Israel and Western satellite imagery providers rapidly display the effects of such strikes and confirm the destruction of targets. Yet this strangely did not occur in this case. The limited number of known S-300 sites depicted after the strikes reveal that these fire control radars are absent. While this absence could indicate that more than one radar was neutralized, it could equally be explained by Iran's awareness of these radars' high-priority target status. Consequently, Iran likely maintains constant movement of the radars and positions them at secret sites, utilizing their specialized data link system to sustain connectivity with the rest of the battery components. The other significant Iranian reaction lending credence to Israel's assertion that multiple radars were struck was the unveiling of the newest variant of Iran's indigenous Bavar 373 long-range air and missile defense system. Notably, during this unveiling, the Bavar Teller, featuring its mast-mounted illuminator antenna, was displayed alongside an S-300 launcher. This deliberate pairing of two distinct systems conveyed a clear message to Israel. Even if all S-300 fire control radars are destroyed, Iran can still employ one or multiple such Bavar tailors, equipped with illuminators to maintain S-300 battery functionality. For example, Iran could integrate the Bavar 373's illuminator with the S-300's 96L-6E acquisition radar, NATO codename Cheeseboard, thereby enabling continued battery operations. 
Furthermore, Iran's Armin Air and Missile Defense System incorporates a PISA radar array derived from those of the S-300 fire control radars. While the Armin's radar performance is likely inferior to the longer-range S-300 PMU-2 fire control radars, and a hybrid operational mode combining Armin and S-300 components is not known to exist. This development nonetheless demonstrates that the single confirmed damaged S-300 fire control radar from the April 2024 strike could feasibly be repaired. This repairability stems from Iran's domestic production of Armand's very similar radar array. Therefore, these Iranian unveilings can be interpreted as actions designed to disincentivize Israel from attacking the S-300 fire control radars under the belief that such strikes would neutralize the missile defense capability protecting the capital, Tehran. So now, let us examine the history of the S-300 system in Iran. Iran's interest in the S-300P series, which is entirely different in design from the S-300V series, dates back to the late 1980s. At that time, Iran was sold the S-200, a 1960s technology long-range surface-to-air missile, instead of the more advanced S-300P while the S-200 had a longer range against high-altitude air-breathing threats, emerging threats such as Israel's Jericho II medium-range ballistic missile and Saudi Arabia's purchase of Dongfeng III medium-range ballistic missiles from China exposed a critical vulnerability. Tehran, the capital city, was at risk of conventional and unconventional countervalue strikes by these ballistic missiles. In comparison to the S-200, the S-300P had a credible capability against short- and medium-range ballistic missiles. When Russia developed the S-300PM series in 1992, extending the range against air-breathing targets from 90 km to 150 km, Iran's interest in the system grew further, as this range was closing to the 250 km nominal maximum range of the S-200 already in service. By 1997, with the introduction of the S-300PM2, or PMU-2 in its export version, and its 200-kilometer maximum range, Iran began to press Russia for a deal. However, intense direct pressure from the then US President Clinton resulted in Russia denying Iran the sale. Rumors suggest that during the late 1990s, after Russia's refusal to sell the S-300P, Iran sought alternative sources to acquire the system. It is rumored that a limited number of S-300 PT or PS systems were purchased from Belarus to equip Tehran with a ballistic missile defense capability. These reports were never confirmed, and Iran never unveiled such a system. By the mid-2000s, Iran made a second attempt to purchase the S-300 PMU-2 system from Russia, and succeeded in signing a contract for several batteries. Once again, under US and Israeli pressure, Russian President Putin unilaterally canceled the contract. As compensation, Russia delivered the short-range Tor M1 SAM systems Iran had also purchased, along with several radar systems, including the advanced Nebo SVU. In response, Iran protested the cancellation, and in 2010 showcased mock-ups of an S-300 PM look-alike system called the Bavar 373. This move signaled to Russia that Iran intended to develop its own long-range surface-to-air missile system with ballistic missile defense capabilities. Rumors about the presence of Belarusian purchased S-300 systems may have lent credibility to Iran's display and announcement, suggesting that Russia might lose a future deal. However, the threat was likely not very credible to the Russians, who were aware of the monumental scientific and industrial efforts required to build a system equivalent to the S-300P. The Soviet Union had stated the requirement for the S-300 in the 1960s, with the interim solution S-300PT entering service in the late 1970s. The final system, based on the 1960s requirements, only entered service in the 1980s. Thus, even with vast experience in SAM systems, it took the Soviet Union nearly two decades to develop the S-300PS system. The S-300P series was designed with the requirement of a high-velocity interceptor missile capable of reaching Mach 6. It was intended to provide standoff range against air-breathing targets and a credible capability to protect cities and air bases against ballistic missiles. High missile kinematic requirements were coupled with the need for high off-road capability for all battery components and a five-minute shoot-and-scoot high mobility capability, allowing rapid deployment and retrieval to make strikes against the high-value system difficult. The S-300P was conceived as an all-rounder 
capable of engaging medium-range ballistic missiles, high-altitude air-breathing targets, and terrain-masking threats such as interdictor fighter bombers and cruise missiles. Another key requirement for the S-300P was its resistance to jamming and interference. To ensure a secure capability against future jamming techniques and technologies, the engagement radar of the system was designed to counteract these through brute force, employing the burn-through solution. This method involves emitting radio frequency energy at such a high level that it cannot be obscured by adversary jamming signals. To meet this requirement, along with the need for multiple simultaneous target engagements, a passive electronically steered array, PISA, was developed, similar to the approach selected for the US Patriot system. The engagement radar, with the NATO codename FlapLID, operates in the X-band and features a large phased array, using the so-called space feed technique to power the PISA phased array. For early warning, a S-300 battalion is equipped with the large S-band PISA radar, characterized by its Janus-faced two-array design, and codenamed Big Bird by NATO. This radar provides early detection of targets at long ranges. An S-300P battery may also include components that are not 5-minute shoot-and-scoot capable, such as the mast-mounted continuous wave search radar, codenamed Clamshell by NATO, used to detect very low-flying targets, or configurations where the flap-lid engagement radar is mounted on a mast, operating out of forest region. To eliminate these static battery components, the S-300PM version introduced a new S-band radar, codenamed Cheeseboard by NATO. This radar has a high capability against low-altitude targets and is mounted on a shoot-and-scoot capable off-road vehicle, allowing it to travel with the rest of the S-300PM battery components. The S-300PM U2 variant, with all battery components being 5-minute shoot-and-scoot capable, with secure data links, off-road capability, and a range of up to 200 kilometers against various targets, was finally the variant that Russia agreed to deliver to Iran by the mid-2010s. Worsening relations with the West due to conflicts in Georgia and later Ukraine compelled Russia to sell about four S-300 PMU batteries to Iran. The S-300 PMU-2 variant delivered to Iran was significantly different from the older S-300P variants. To enhance its lethality, the guidance system of the vertically cold-launched missile was changed from command guidance to semi-active radar homing. In this system, the engagement radar with its high-power X-band array illuminates the target in the final seconds of the endgame phase, allowing the missile's passive, semi-active radar homing seeker to acquire, track, and kill the target. To further improve robustness, the guidance system employs the seeker-aided ground guidance concept SAG, where the missile downlinks the signature of the target it senses with its seeker to the engagement and illumination radar on the ground. The radar then compares this data with the signature pattern obtained from the ground sensors. This guidance concept benefits from the B-static arrangement of the missile seeker and the ground-based engagement radar, as well as the fusion and comparison of different radar band sensor data to detect, identify, and exclude interference signals from the adversary. While this guidance concept means that the minimum engagement altitude is limited by the horizon, reaching several kilometers in height at the maximum range of 200 kilometers, the robustness it offers compared to active radar homing seekers with their low available power enhances the system's resistance to jamming and increases its lethality. Therefore, the use of semi-active radar homing and the SAGG concepts for the S-300 PMU-2 represents a logical approach. The 48H6E2 missile of Iran's S-300 PMU-2 systems also possess a thrust vectoring control capability for very short-range engagements. Compared with the older S-300P missile variants, the new missiles feature a modified thrust vectoring jet vane design, which is believed to remain intact for a longer period, thereby increasing the system's agility and turn capability, especially as air density decreases. This feature could theoretically enhance performance against ballistic missile targets by improving the missile's turn capability at engagement ranges of 10 to 20 kilometers allowing it to effectively hit a maneuvering ballistic missile with its heavy 180-kilogram directional fragmentation warhead. It is believed that Iran's access to the S-300 PMU-2 significantly influenced the design of its indigenous Bavar 373 SAM project, incorporating advanced technologies from the S-300 PMU-2.
This technology is also believed to be crucial in the development of the Jushan PISA radar upgrade for the 15th Cordad SAM system. Contrary to popular belief, the overall technological differences between Iran's S-300 PMU-2 variant and the S-400 without its long-range 40N6 missile are relatively small. The prolonged delay in Iran's acquisition of the S-300 system allowed its industrial capabilities to advance to a level, which enabled the development of similar indigenous surface-to-air missile systems. While Iran's large territorial size would have necessitated a substantial purchase of S-300 systems in the 1990s and 2000s, by the 2010s, following the breach of contract by the Russian side, Iran opted to purchase a limited number of S-300s. This decision was made to leverage access to the S-300 technology for the development of indigenous systems, which could be produced at a significantly lower cost than the expensive, high-end S-300 PMU-2. Recently, the Armin SAM system, in its variant for the Air Defense Force, has utilized an S-300-like PISA engagement radar, favoring it over a combination of an S-band ESA radar with active radar homing seeker missiles as selected by the IRGC Aerospace Force. In many applications, an S-300-type X-band PISA radar can be significantly more robust and cost-efficient than newer developments. In summary, the S-300 PMU-2 is a sophisticated SAM system designed to meet a variety of stringent requirements. These include a 5-minute shoot and scoot capability and extremely low reaction times of approximately 5 seconds to counter medium-range ballistic missiles. It has the ability to engage up to six targets simultaneously via a vertical cold-launched concept for reduced reaction time and continuous on-alert capability. Also integrated is jet vane thrust vector control for trajectory alteration to engage low-altitude targets like cruise missiles, and a potential thrust vectoring-assisted high-turn capability for short-range engagements with ballistic missiles. All these capabilities are mounted on specially developed off-road capable chassis. As a result, the S-300 PMU-2 is a highly capable but also relatively expensive system. The limited number of these systems within Iran's Air Defense Force means their primary role within Iran's integrated air defense system is to engage high-altitude targets and, most importantly, short to medium-range ballistic missiles, thereby protecting the most vital cities and regions of Iran. So that's all for today. If you liked it, give a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. It really makes a difference in the YouTube algorithm and is a great support to the channel. The real enthusiast can become members and given access to exciting membership area material. Thanks for your support and motivation. See you next time.